first I'd like to give a quick review of the LP4 and then add the LP5. First is uh, love, love or loved. And if you have the sermon outline, it has the, the main points for the first two weeks. But I, before I get into that, I guess I better read the God's Word in the Gospel. And I'd like for us to, after the first line, I'll read this first line. This then is how you should pray. And, and let's, let us pray this together. And, you know, usually we just say it as we've, uh, it's been a part of us. But this is how God's Word says it. And it's, we, we can just say the words and we're praying the Lord's Prayer as we read the Gospel from Matthew 6. We pray together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So you can, you, you, I think you have a pretty guy, good idea what the fifth P is going to be based on that. But let's go back to uh, L. First of all, we're, we're loved by God. And I was thinking about what love is. You know, and love is just accepting someone right where they are. Right where they are. But it's also loving them so much you don't, want to just leave them where they are. You want to encourage them. You want to help them to uh, get more out of life. In Romans 5, 8, it says, God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, he accepted us right where we are. And now he's working in our lives to provide more and more and more for us. I'll read what it says in your outline there. It says, No matter who you are or what you have done, we are dearly loved and forgiven by God. We are blessed as we love others with God's love. You know, the the definition of love for the world is so different. It's always dependent on something else. But it's it's really just God's love flowing through us. The, the love chapter that's read at many weddings is 1 Corinthians 13. Did you know that the first words of chapter 14, in different ways, it says, make love your highest aim, or pursue love. And that can be hard with some people, especially if we look at it in the ways of the world, look at it, well, if they're good, I can love them. No. We love them with God's love. While we are yet sinners, He died for us. While they're still scoundrels, we, we love them. It doesn't, it's not dependent on how they treat us. Good or bad or ugly. We love them with God's love. So the first L is loved. Or the only L is love. The first P is presence. It's written out, The presence of God to us is the forgiveness of all our sins that enables us to enjoy new life with Him. Psalm 16, 11 says, In your presence, God is the fullness of joy. You know, if there's an emptiness in your life, you're not experiencing God's presence. We all have that hole in our life that needs to be filled by God living in us, by God being present with us. I mean, that was the gift of Christmas, His presence. That's the gift of His Son. That's the gift of the sacrifice on the cross. Because sin separated us from God. But His Son took away that sin and renewed, gave us a new life with Him. And then, it, it says, our, our our present is being present with others. Being present with others. You know, I, I noticed at the youth group the other night, 
this might have been the first time that it ever happened without anybody saying it. We were, we were talking. In fact, we had quite a long time together just talking. And not once during that whole time was there any texting going on. And I, you know, and, I, and when I got home, I, 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 I had a good feeling about youth group that night, but I never, and I said, you know what? They weren't someplace else. They were present. It's so easy for us to be somewhere else, isn't it? We're, we're dwelling on the past. We're excited about the future. Uh, you know, there's so many things. We're worried about something. Instead of just investing our lives with someone right there where they are. I mean, the, the new technology is a, just such a great blessing, but it can be a curse. So the first P is present as we enjoy God's presence with us that fills our greatest need and as we are present with others, focusing on them. The second P is purpose. Our lives have a greater purpose than ourselves. And that's so good. The most miserable people I've seen, and I'm just talking about people that are so unhappy, are the ones that are focused on self. What a great blessing it is when we can get beyond ourselves. And, and God's given us a purpose to live with Him and for Him. And that's, isn't that where fulfillment is? What a joy it is when we allow God to use us in other people's lives. So the other sentence, we have the joy of being used by God to make an eternal difference in the lives of others. Paul said it so beautifully in Philippians 1. 21, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I know it's going to be gain when I die. And I believe, Paul, that to me to live is Christ, but I have to admit too often to me to live is Steve. It's that tension there. It's that selfishness. It's that self-serving instead of God-serving. But we have a greater purpose. And, you know, I, I, I was struggling with how do the uh, people in the persecuted church live with that persecution and facing death and stand strong in their faith? It's because to them to live is Christ and to die is gain. They know they have nothing to lose here. Everything is Christ. Purpose. The third P is power. We are weak, but we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to accomplish great things. In a, a doxology or praise to God in Ephesians 3, it's so beautiful as, as Paul says, Now to him who is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. And I've read that for years, but boy, in the last year, it really has hit me. Where? Where is that? It, his power that is at work within us. I think most of us would admit that we have a powerful God. But it's so easy to say, well, God is powerful, but it doesn't make any difference to me. It's within us. When I go to accomplish a task, so often I look at it on my ability Instead of, okay, I'm going to try to be faithful. I'll let God's power accomplish this. Because any great thing is accomplished through God. And then secondly, instead of our lives being filled with many things, we have more power when we have a laser-like focus. I, I was reading a, a, a book last night, and it, it emphasized how Satan in most Christians' life, doesn't use the big wow sins because we, it's easy for us to say no to that. But he can use a lot of good things to get us sidelined. And we, we get involved in other things besides God. And certainly our life is more than just God. But we can get consumed by these things. J Jesus said, love the Lord your God with how much? With 
all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. That's laser-like focus. You know, when, when you're spread out trying to do so many things, it, it takes longer, you're not quite as effective, but when you're really zeroed in on something, how, how powerful that can be. So the third P is power. Fourth P is promises. We know the promise giver, that's God, who is faithful and willing and able to keep his promises. And we know he, the enemy, the, the enemy, uh, that's death, uh, the devil, who is a liar and deceiver and has no truth in him. The devil lies all the time. He makes bad things look good all the time. And right look wrong. But God is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We discover, believe, and trust God's promises and apply them to the situations in our lives. Listen what Peter writes in 1 Peter 1, 3, 4. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. I challenge you to, to look in the word and instead of reading a whole lot, zero in on a few things and just find a promise and write it down and memorize it and make it part of you. You know, depending on where you are, maybe find the God of all comfort will comfort you. The God with strength will give you strength in your weakness. If you're fearful, go to Joshua 1, nine. you know, and uh, where he tells us not to fear because he is with us. How many of you have that as your confirmation verse? Anybody have Joshua 1, 1, 9? There's a few, oh Yeah, a few of you. I know we had two this year even. So that's such a precious promise. That's why uh, people have chosen that. So the fourth P is promises. And don't, don't underestimate the importance of hiding those in your heart. And then the fifth P is prayer. And, and I, as I thought about this, I'd just like to focus on two parts of prayer today. Praise and dependence. Praise and dependence as we come to God with confidence and in humility. First, we acknowledge that God is willing and able to help us. Think of the start of the Lord's Prayer. What, what's the very first phrase? Our Father who art in heaven. So, you know, I don't know if you realize how drastic this is. The people at Jesus' time were so in awe of God, they didn't even say the name. We've come a long way since then. I like the personal relationship we have with him, but we never want to lose how awesome our God is. So when we say, our Father, we're saying we have a personal relationship with him. And a father only wants the best for his children, right? And so a father is willing to help his child. I would do anything for my daughters that I'm able to do. So we're acknowledging that, that we, we should come to him, not, not afraid, but knowing that we have an invitation through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Heaven denotes all the glory, all the resources of God. Everything is at God's disposal. So God is not only willing to help us, He is able to help us. So we should go there with confidence. But also, we should go there praising Him that we have such a loving God and a great God. Wow. 
And then, secondly, we completely depend on Him as we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, live for Him. I'm going to turn to Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 15. Many of you are familiar with this. It talks about the people bringing the little children to uh, Jesus. And uh, it was for him to place their hands on them. They wanted Jesus to bless them. But what did the disciples do? They rebuked him. Jesus, you're above this. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. I don't know exactly what that word means, but I know he wasn't happy, right? No, he was, he was very put back. He, he was very disappointed in them. So this is what he said to them. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. A little child. It's talking, you know, they had a lot of words for children in, in the Greek. And that's talking about an infant like Samantha there. Now, uh, Luke and Tara have four kids. I'll guarantee you the other three kids are not as dependent on them as Samantha is. Especially, uh, you know, when they, you know what two-year-olds, they always say, and it doesn't have to be that way. But it's a challenge. Uh, teenagers like to be independent. You know, they like the freedom without the responsibility. God says, come to me as a little de child, as a baby, who is totally, totally dependent. What do we do? It, oftentimes in the church I've seen it, in my personal life, and in so many places I've seen it. Oh, I got this great plan. God bless my plan. Instead of going to God and say, guide me, God. Help me to come up with a plan. And then ask my blessing, ask his blessing on that. Oh, I become so often so independent. I mean, that was my goal in life. When, when I was young, I just wanted to be independent. I, w I wanted to make enough money so I could just... You know, I love my parents. I didn't. I had great uh, parents, but I wanted to be independent. It's not that I had to get out of the house. I just wanted freedom, you know. But God says, "Be dependent, because I have everything you need. I am everything you need." That's the truth right there. I am everything you need. And when we know that, then out of that flows everything we need. You know, when Paul said to live as Christ, he was saying, I don't need anything else. When we can say I, to live as Christ, everything else becomes such a blessing. And we don't have anything to worry about. Right? Because we're depending totally on God. We know that He'll work out things for our good. Oh, I wish I could say I understood the mind of God. But I guess I'm glad I can't because if I could say I understand the mind of God, then he wouldn't be any better than I am or any greater than I am. I'm glad he is so great that I can't comprehend his greatness and his plan and why he allows sin and fallen man to uh, make our lives difficult. So prayer is... First of all, acknowledging, praising God like we were this morning as we began our worship, praising Him and saying, God, God, You are all I need. And from there, we just depend on Him. I challenge you to, to keep a journal. Have a plan. Have a prayer plan. You know, everything important in your life gets scheduled, right? Anybody write down things? I need to at my age. I need to write down things. 
honestly, I need it more importantly now that I have more free time. When I was busy, I could remember a lot easier because uh, I had to do them. But now I can get caught up in doing nothing. So it's really important that I write down or have a regular time and a regular place and a journal to write down my prayers. You know, if you know that God is willing and able to help you and you depend on Him totally, you can go to Him with confidence. And even though you don't always understand how He works, you can trust Him. On the wall back there, Proverbs 3, 6, it says, what's it say? What's it say? You guys remember? I talked about this Wednesday night. Uh, right above your picture, Jaden, right above your picture. Right, right above your picture camera. It says, okay, well, ask adults. Who knows? What's the first word? My goodness, we're going to have to make you... I'm going to lock that door and make you go out the back way. This is embarrassing. Trust. All right. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 